Ah, mais j'en sais. Oh, I need to do the other. I need to get the ash cam set up. In uh, high school, we did this whole chicken, mm -hmm. chicken thing. It was actually written out. It was a, like sheet music for like the chicken. Um, The At least chicken classic montage was. <laughs> and um, there was, I thought it was hilarious. There was a great rebellion because of all of the high schoolers, and they were too good for this. We were not going to sing like chickens. Yeah. I thought it was hilarious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Have you ever seen the, the cat one? I think I've, I've probably showed you the cat one before, right? Uh, maybe. It's two boys singing the song. Yeah, it's great. I, I will find it. I don't remember what it's called, but it's one of my favorites. I don't think I know that. <laughs> and then it gets to another point. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> They're all sitting. I'm <laughs> meowing. <laughs> 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 the the cat the the cat and chicken show. <laughs> we will not use our words today. <laughs> yesterday, you thought yesterday was weird. <laughs> <laughs> we need help. <laughs> Good morning, good morning. Thanks for joining us today. This is, um, is being with God, is there like a, is that on Facebook or what is it on? It is on Facebook, yeah. So maybe, uh, Most Be Heart of Mary? Is that what it is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I put the link there. Oh yeah, certainly. I'll bring it in maybe. Good morning, good morning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think a lot of ours watch after the fact though too. Look at that. Look at look at look how professional that looks. Yeah, well that's ridiculous. That's because they're a commu uh, communications lady. She's really good. Okay, that's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Darn it, look at that. I want to harass him. Yeah. I'm going to type that right now. We're coming after you. We're coming after you. <laughs> you, should, you should put a link to ours now. He was responding to me when I was talking to him earlier. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to let us do this. What is that? Add the web page in there. I have no idea. Oh, they were referring to us. Oh! <laughs> 
was fantastic. <laughs> hey, we're having a lot of fun with another, with our, a priest friend of ours over at Most Priority Mary in Topeka. <laughs> oh my goodness. Thank you all so much for joining us today. We should probably get started. Oh my. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, it's only 10 to 1. We're doing all yeah, right. Yeah, we're fine. I thought we were running more later than that. We're all good. All right, well, oh welcome, God. everybody. Let me take the the thing down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, well, um, I'll put this up. Let's see here. I'll put this up right now. So welcome, everybody, to mm -hmm. our fireside chat um, here. But I'm going to take you down to, over to the other webpage because it's still live. It's still live? Yep, there he is. Oh, you so, can actually see it live? I, yes! Oh, that's incredible. I know! So, um, my good friend, Father Greg Hamas, I believe this is episode one of mm -hmm. his uh, show, Being with God. Mm -hmm. Spelled B-E-A-N That's with right. God. And he was just showing off his Hebrews cup. Mm, yeah. Cute, mm -hmm. huh? So, so <laughs> there's so many backstories to start with. So, so, Father Greg's a good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. and, and mine also. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you, you were at Most Art for a while, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is like a show within a show. Look at that. Um, so his show is live right now. And uh, so if you, if you get bored with us, you can, you can go over there go or over start there. over there and come over and see us later. But um, he has like, uh, what was it, 143 viewers or something? Well, I, and we normally gather 40, 50, 50, 60, yeah. you know. Uh, later, and, I think people watch us later in the day right, also. Right. So we become part of your lives. This is just a novelty. <laughs> That's what I say. So, <laughs> so, Father Greg, we're coming after you. Fireside mm -hmm. chat versus being with God right now. We're throwing down the gavel mm -hmm. or whatever. So, gavel? The... No, the gauntlet. gauntlet. Gauntlet, yes. Or the gavel. <laughs> that would cause injury also. <laughs> so anyway, no, we're very happy that uh, Father Greg is doing a show also. Mm -hmm. uh, again, we're just teasing him, but uh, if he were here, he would say the same thing. So I, yeah. I, I posted in their comments um, our, our show. Our show, exactly. Uh, and so he said, yeah, come over and see our show once you're done here. But mm -hmm. anyway, there's Father Greg's show over there, Being With God. So mm -hmm. Now um, that's actually hilarious because... I started a youth mini a, a uh, young adult ministry with him back in 2015, I think, about five years ago, and that was the original name he wanted for it, and I crushed it. <laughs> <laughs> I said that was so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I think that's how, how the whole that's how our whole conversation. He was over there on his phone, and mm -hmm. I guess he was getting all kinds of comments and oh, we love you, Father Ashmore, or whatever. Right. And that's what whole sparked the whole thing. And then he saw that the show was going on, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now we've de declared a declared war. Declared war. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the priest. We'll take no prisoners. <laughs> mm -hmm. The Geneva Convention has nothing on this. <laughs> so anyway, um, it's pretty, it's pretty funny. I mm -hmm. think. Again, he's a good friend of mine. We um, we've gone on um, vacations together, uh, retreats together, Father Greg. So he's great. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's just friendly. Friendly razzing with uh, mm -hmm. our 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 common friend over there in Topeka. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, very good. Um, we are drinking today. So back, back to us. Mm -hmm. um, we are drinking today. We are drinking caribou blood. We are getting um, low on dangerously coffee. low on it's coffee. True. I don't know where our uh, what happened to all of our coffee, but mm -hmm. um, and there's honey where everywhere. There's from? honey where everywhere. Go? Where did all that coffee go? <laughs> where did it come from? Where did it go? <laughs> We need to get some good morning, Joe. Mm -hmm. um, there we go. And then uh, notice. Yep. Let's see here. I got to. Uh, I got to take the the banner down. Oh. Um, you want to have the banner? Oh, that's fine. Okay. So notice, uh, <laughs> it's our bowl of carrots. Remember last week we had a huge piling mound of, mound of bacon, and now we have carrots because it is Friday. Welcome back to Penance Friday. Mm -hmm. We have carrots and not bacon. It's, um, it's tasty, crunchy. Right, right. I mean, bacon, carrots are good. I like carrots. But I just thought, you know, what is the opposite of uh, bacon? bacon? Mm -hmm. Originally, I thought broccoli because there's nice alliteration there, too. Yeah. But bacon your broccoli, broccoli doesn't look very... <laughs> we kind of forgot about it. It was in the refrigerator. It's <laughs> mm -hmm. looked a little brown. So anyway, 
I have carrots. So a reminder that on Fridays we are called to do some sort of penance. It doesn't have to be meat uh, outside of Lent. Uh, we have that freedom in the United States to choose our own penance, but we're supposed to do some sort of penance today. So mm -hmm. um, whether that means not eating bacon or not eating meats. Or going and watching Father Greg's show. <laughs> <laughs> well played. <laughs> Your penance today <laughs> is go watch. Well, maybe their penance is watching our show. Uh, uh, no. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> so, <laughs> Your penance. Let's see if he's, is he still is he still, he's jabbering still going on. Yeah, there, oh, he, goes. Goodness, he's there he goes. He's still going. So oh, we'll just keep checking in on him throughout the show. So uh, no, I'm sure it's great. I'm, I'm, not, I'm gonna go uh, check it out afterwards, but maybe not while we're live. So. Um, so yes, I did hear him give us give us props. So mm -hmm. that was good. So Father Ken, we're called to do penance on yes. Fridays. Why are we called to do penance on Fridays? What be because Jesus died on Friday. Okay, he suffered. What does that have to do with us? We're part of the community of Christ, the body of Christ, that we suffer as well. Okay, we okay. offer up our penance and unite it to the sacrifice of Christ and for the salvation of the world. Hmm. Is that what you're going for? Or, or what were you, what were you throwing out at me? I was throwing it out there. I'm curious. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's what that's what I would say. That we unite our we, we unite our lives to the life of Jesus Christ, and we we penance on we that cycle of that cycle is good for us, right? So the whole year long liturgical cycle is good for us to go through Christmas and Easter and Lent and mm -hmm. Advent and uh, all those things, and so it, and that weekly cycle is good for us too. So yeah, yeah. a lot of people, I think. Uh, a lot of people underestimate how good penance is for us. Yeah. We think of it as a negative thing, but it's actually a really positive thing. Uh -huh. um, because when we do some form of penance, when we take on some form of suffering, we're counteracting the tendency to sin that we have. And so perhaps you're struggling with a certain sin, um, especially sins that are more carnal, more fleshly. Physical penances are really good fleshly? to counteract that. What's that? Fleshly? Fleshly, fleshly yes. <laughs> Carnally, fleshly. Um, they're really good because what you're doing is you're training yourself to be able to say no in certain situations so that you can say yes in other situations. Right, right. So penance is really a positive thing rather than a negative thing. Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, you know, I think of that too of like if you're on a diet plan or, or whatever. I mean, most people, um, if they want to be healthier, most people are grateful for um, if they've lost a few pounds. I'm like, I can actually get out of my chair better now. And this is actually good for me. And it, it took me some penance. It took some um, discipline and exercise of all that. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it's good for me. And I can do these things that I want to do um, that I felt maybe sluggish before. But it's good for us. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, um, very good. Well, I want to give a... I want to give my shout out to my uh, nieces here, um, and and then I'll, then I'll show you show you why I do that in just a second here. So I'll take it to the O'Camerer. Oh, my O'Camerer is all off. There we go. And I'll click that on. There we and go. And there we are. I will say hello there, Rachel. Hello, Rosalie. How are you? Hello, Laura. Happy Friday to you. I hope that you are having a great day. I hope that you are enjoying uh, time today. I don't know if you're going to do any coloring or it's a little rainy to do bicycling out today, mm -hmm. but maybe maybe you can, when it gets nice, you can do some chalk drawings again. And uh, so hope that you're going to have a really fun day and I miss you and hope to see you soon. All right. Now I'm going to go back to the show and I'm going to show some other stuff here. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes, I give a little shout out to my nieces every day, and, um, and you might wonder why I do. <laughs> you might wonder why I do that each mm -hmm. day, uh, but there is, well, let's see, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do this. Um, there is a rationale be, 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 uh, for that. Let me click this here. Mm -hmm. Is <clears throat> um, because um, sometimes my... Uh, my sister sends me videos capturing what has happened there um, of, of them watching the show, and it's just so precious. I just can't imagine uh, not doing that. So I'm gonna. I got permission from my uh, sister to show these little clips of my nieces watching the show. I think they're just pretty darn precious. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna show those for you uh, now. Um, but anyway, uh, good, good to see you. Um, and, uh, have a good day. Come on. This guy. 
Uh, and here's another one. Oh, you can still see them. I thought all the dogs were. And I think I saw you on your bicycle yesterday, and I saw a spectacularly Rachel. You were bicycling. Great. I was amazed. It was awesome. Good job. I guess it was a tricycle. It's true. Yes. I don't know. And then I think this one is my favorite, though. This one was from early on. I'll just show this one here. Anyway, I like how bigger eyeballs get. It's so precious. So anyway, that's why I do that every day, because it's pretty darn sweet to see their reactions. Mm -hmm. So um, very good. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> what else uh, do, do we have today? Get your questions uh, coming in for us. We're happy to have uh, those questions, <coughs> anything that you've got that you're working on. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, <coughs> so... <coughs> Sorry, You're doing your Karen penance to switch, for the day. I need to switch to filters. <laughs> <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> Very good. Uh. Um, yesterday we had a really uh, good conversation. I think about like mm. mourning and grief and right. um, all those things. And uh, Javeen uh, Niederheiser was with us, and uh, she's a school psychologist. And so I um, zoomed with her this morning because um, I thought it'd be good for her to to offer some more of her. Um, our professional tips and tricks. I also think it's good. What we've been hearing a little bit is to get, and I've been talking about, is to get some other faces, to see some other people. I mean, I think people enjoy seeing the two of us, uh, obviously, because well, you're tuning in, I guess, but or or it's your penance. Tolerate. Yeah. Um, uh, but we thought it'd be good for to get some other faces in as well and some other um, perspectives. So um, we'll try this out today, and I've got a uh, clip. It's about uh, seven minutes long. Uh, with Javine, and I think it's really good. Um, how do you live, um, especially as a parent, um, with kids in the in your house? Or I think it's applicable in, in, in many things of what we're experiencing, experiencing and grief and everything. So let me get that uh, video queued up, and hopefully it's going to work. It doesn't look like it's doing anything on my uh, on my screen itself, but hopefully it will. All right, well, hello and welcome to kind of one of our first cutaway little segments. We right. hope to do so this with more frequency, but yesterday we were talking with Javine in the comments, and she's a school psychologist. Do you want to say where you are? I don't think Shawnee it's Mission going, right? School there's, District. Shawnee Mission screen. School District. There is. Um, so and oh, um, so we were talking a little bit about grief and everything yesterday in, in the chat, and yes. um, I invited Javine just to share some of her expertise as a school psychologist, and I thought... Let's try something new. Let's do a little segment here. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's go to our expert in the field now. School psychologist, you want to say where you are? Shawnee Mission School District. Shawnee Mission School District. Um, and um, so we were talking a little bit about grief and everything yesterday in, in the chat. And um, I invited Javine just to share some of her expertise as a school psychologist. And I thought, well, let's try something new. Let's do a little segment here. So uh, mm -hmm. let's go to our expert in the field. Now, here is Javine. Thank you, Father Kent. Um, yesterday, I had commented that students can experience the loss of their school year, um, contact with students, contact with their friends, very similar to one that you might experience with a death. And um, they can demonstrate those five stages of grief um, from that model, and it can manifest in different ways. Um, in a lot of my work very recently, um, I have utilized some strategies with students and parents um, in dealing with that loss and dealing with that grief um, with a blend of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, um, which you might have also heard of. Um, both of these models will be shared in the comments through some linked images so you can kind of see what some of that phasing looks like. Um, 
right now with students with grief and having to move to online learning, it is a sudden change in their educational style, um, especially if they've been, you know, going into a physical building to experience their education. And so a lot of parents have expressed concerns, you know, that they weren't fully set up to homeschool their children and um, some concerns with their children not engaging with the curriculum, um, particularly in my district, we have um, student engagement that's pretty low. Um, and some parents have contacted me via emails. Um, and in some of my follow up phone calls, they've shared that um, their students are just not getting out of bed or, you know, not wanting to engage at all with continuous learning. And what I've shared with parents is that they, um, you know, really shouldn't push too hard right now with the curriculum. Um, this isn't homeschooling, this is crisis schooling, because we've had this sudden change with the coronavirus to a new style of learning that no one was really anticipating or set up for. I mean, we kind of got the, the call as teachers um, before spring break to send students home with some materials, but we didn't know how long we would be out of school or that the entire rest of the school year would be um, closed to in-person instruction and that we'd be moving to this format. So we've really had to try to learn things in a very short period of time. So parents are stressed, staff members are stressed, and so are the students. And the students experience it um, almost tenfold because their fellow students and their schools are really um, their entire community, you know, and their entire connection and experience. And so it's been um, really traumatizing for them. And so what I've shared with parents is don't necessarily push the academics, give students that space to grieve, um, that space to be angry or sad. Um, it could look like having a room in the house, um, definitely keep the door open, don't have them locking their bedroom doors. You wanna make sure that you're supervising them at all times, of course. Um, but having some comfort items, you know, for the littles, you might have your, um, you know, a blanket or a favorite stuffed animal or something like that, and being sure to check in with them and offering um, some of the activities when they're ready, but not really pushing them right now to do all of those things because they do need that space to grieve. Um, additionally, you know, referring back to the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, with that sudden shakeup of the educational style, you know, that bottom rung of the triangle is your physiological needs. You know, these are the needs that are supposed to be met first before you can, you know, move up the ladder towards your self-actualization. Um, and in that bottom rung of physiology, the next step up is safety and belonging. And so with this sudden change, you know, and with all of the social media posts and the news broadcasts, um, you know, we've really kind of shaken up everybody's feelings of safety and belonging. So this is kind of where we're at, um, you know, so we really can't get past, you know, and move on to, you know, some of those other um, aspects of the hierarchy until we've addressed fully the safety and belonging. So um, tips and tricks for parents right now is to kind of you know, make sure you're checking in with your kiddos, giving them that space to grieve their loss and be sad and be angry, but, you know, definitely having still some expectations in place for them. Some, some light expectations could be just, you know, like a chore or, um, you know, something that they had done before that was part of their daily or nightly routine. Um, because we know in research that routines and expectations help students to feel safe um, which addresses that, that Maslow's hierarchy. So amongst all of this disruption in their schedules, um, you know, you, you still have those procedures in place and you're still checking in with your kiddos, um, but really just being together and, and grieving together and being understanding and not so much pushing, um, you know, intensive work at this time, it's gonna look a little bit different. You're gonna to have to give each other a little bit of grace um, with that as well. So um, just a few tips and tricks for parents. Um, and of course I can share some additional resources if you were wanting to um, create some comfort items or some activities with your kiddos as well, just to kind of work through that process. Great. 
Well, thanks so much, Javine. That's excellent. I think those are great uh, tips and tricks and background to all these um, awesome things. I mean, yes, neither Father Ashmore and I are, or I are a psychologist. And so I really appreciate that professional, those professional tips. And I think hopefully uh, people have also enjoyed that. And um, uh, how do, is there a way that they can contact you or get back in touch with you? Or just want you want to provide that in the comments or something or? Absolutely. I can provide my information in the comments as well. Um, my email for sure is Great. the best way. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thanks so much, Davina. Really appreciate you being on here today. Thank you. Turn on our mics. All right. I think our mic is back on. It seems like it. Very Looks good. Be so. All right. So thanks so much. Um, hopefully that was a helpful little segment. We've never done a, a, a cut in segment before. <laughs> right. And um, well, we had uh, we had Mary Mueller on. I have another one from uh, Karen Pepich, but I, I, I thought I had one, but I um, I can't find the file, so I need to email mm -hmm. her again. So, Karen, if you're watching, it's it's not that I I, I sent any uh, responses. Where did that file go? So, uh, and here up here, you can see these are the five stages of grief that she, that she was talking about. So, um, here's a little uh, thing to to look through there, and so if. Later on, if you want to come back and watch or um, pause it right here to kind of look at that, I think that would be uh, a helpful thing for folks. Mm -hmm. So anyway, just kind of a follow-up from our conversation. Um, I, I was hearing some people saying that they would appreciate that kind of thing, so um, we thought we'd uh, give that a little go. Mm -hmm. uh, so Javine, I think we'll put her uh, contact information in in a little bit later. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, you had something you wanted to talk about there, Father Well, I, I think it's interesting, or it could be helpful to yeah. even discuss some of our own experiences of grief and how we saw ourselves process those things. Because one thing that uh, she, I don't know if she heard this necessarily, I, I don't know if she said this necessarily, but uh, is part of the conversation is everybody experiences grief at one point or another. And um, it's a, a totally normal experience. And uh -huh. so one important thing to do with it, as we were saying yesterday, is to normalize grief normalize it as this is something that you will experience in life uh -huh. so when we get to that point we're not taken aback by it uh -huh. we can see okay well we might be taken aback by the event that caused it but then once we're going through that period of grief we can say okay hey i am experiencing something that is a normal process of adjusting to a perceived sense of loss yeah you know right and um I, so i know i've gone through grief on two you know intense grief two or three times in my life, one of them was when my parents got divorced when I was 15 or 16, somewhere uh -huh. around there. Um, you know, they, one of the interesting things, and we, we forget about this, but often the biggest victims within divorce are the children. Sure, right. They're, they're the ones who have to really deal emotionally because their whole world goes uh, goes crazy. The, the foundation of their life totally goes asunder. I've even read that in some ways, divorce is harder on children than even the loss of one of the parents. Because um, the parents, it, if their whole life is founded on this love between two par people and suddenly that's broken, that's almost harder for a child to handle than one of the people dying because then that love is still not broken. It just, there's that change in life as a preface to the Mass of the Dead says, life does not end, it just changes. Uh -huh. Their children are able to handle in a certain way a death of a parent more than they can handle a divorce. Which is a kind of a scary thought, isn't it? It is, But, yes. but it shows also how holy a marriage is. Right. Um, and how beautiful it is. Uh, I know when I, um, when I experienced the divorce of my parents, I really went into a long period of denial for about hmm. a year and a half. Now, denial is not one of those things of you say, uh, you know, I, it's not a conscious activity where you deny that the event is occurring. It is a... Un, a kind of subconscious or unconscious thing where you never think about the effect mm -hmm. and so you're never you never really give yourself the chance to process it so my my friends and i didn't my friends my family members a lot of people didn't even know that my parents were getting divorced i just never talked about it whatsoever mm -hmm. it was really easy for me to hide from that fact and it took me until about a year and a half afterwards to start dealing with a lot of those emotions um that's just one way that we handle it through denial everybody has their coping mechanisms and those coping mechanisms are okay they're good um, they're good insofar as they allow their your body's and your mind's natural way of dealing with them but if we get stuck in those coping mechanisms then it can be unhealthy uh -huh. if i was still in denial about my parents divorce that'd be bad <laughs> but <laughs> right um during that time it was one way that i handled it um some other people 
may handle it by um, getting really angry or other situations like that. Mm -hmm. What I had to learn was I had to not be afraid of those emotions. Right. And to recognize that I was sad and it was okay that I was sad. Mm -hmm. And I was angry. And it was okay that I was angry at my parents. Um, or, you know, what, whatever emotion that I had to feel, I had to honor those and give myself permission to feel them. And once I did that, then I could actually start processing them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a good observation. And um, as kids, so, I mean, I think that, yes, uh, the divorce can really hurt uh, their, your own kids, but it also can hurt other kids, I yeah. think, as well. Because I know that, you know, part of my, um, I don't know if it's grief or frustration or dis disillusionment or whatever, is I remember as a kid, some of some of my friends, I mean, my parents, thanks be to God, stayed stayed married for their whole life until my dad passed away um till death did they part um but uh but some of these parents i thought were great examples of this is what christian family looks like and then they get divorced and that's that's hard on lots of other people right so i mean mm -hmm. so it there's that m that that thing that is hard for a lot of people and again i'm not making any judge judgments no, but no, we're no. just talking about levels of grief or disillusionment or whatever that 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 can have uh, long-standing um, uh, hurt um, fairly broadly mm -hmm. um, and same thing for like when like priests leave the priesthood same as well way. I mean I know that lots of people have experienced grief with that I, I, I have personally you know with friends that I've known that have that have left you know that mm -hmm. that hurts you know it's like I thought we were going to be <laughs> I thought we were, gonna, we were in this for our lifetime you know and again, I'm not being judgy. I'm just talking about the pain that I feel when that relationship ends. Mm -hmm. um, so That's why I think that definition is really good. And I've said it a couple times, and I'll say it again. It is the normal process by which we adjust to... It's a normal process by which we adjust to a perceived loss. Mm -hmm. that, that means that there's no judgment there. It's a normal process, and it's a loss that we how we perceive it. So uh, many of you may know about Father Evan Harkins, who was a right. priest in St. Joseph, uh, Missouri, who took his own life earlier this year. Right. I still feel like I'm mourning that loss. I don't didn't know him really well. Uh -huh. I've met him on a couple of occasions. It still hurts when I think about him. Sure. I mean, it that, still that's hurts recent. Mm -hmm. And you could look at that and say, oh, Father, you know, he, you hardly knew him. He was in another diocese. Why does it still hurt? Well, because when we lose a priest like that, especially in that awful way, mm -hmm. I perceive I've lost a lot. <laughs> right, right, right. And I, you know, that's not me saying I'm, you know, that's not a pity part. It's just a reality. Right, mm -hmm. right. When we lost our two seminarians uh, there back in whatever that was, 2005 or whatever, mm -hmm. um, Maddie, uh, Maddie and Jared, um, that was a tough, tough loss. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, what, what, is, what is going on? So, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think it's beautiful. Grief is beautiful. Okay. Because it reveals to us how important love is. Uh -huh. Some of us, I, I think we can have a tendency to underestimate how necessary love is for the human person. You grieve because you love something more. You don't grieve the loss of something you don't love. You know? Right, right. Um, I've never grieved the loss of liver and onions. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I don't love liver and onions. I, I've never grieved the loss that I cannot have liver and onions these days. That's or... funny because a priest friend of mine, did, I don't did show, show up in your feed from Springfield, Illinois, showed a Far Side cartoon about the liver and onions truck coming by. Did... No, what? That, that's hilarious. <laughs> that is hilarious. That. So uh -huh. there is a. I, I'm a big fan of reading those comic strips, and my so my two favorites are Far Side and Calvin and Hobbes. Um, there was a. Uh, <laughs> A far side clip, you know, you've got the the ice cream truck going along, doo -doo 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 -doo, uh -huh. and uh, the kids are all running to the ice cream truck. But there was a far side uh, one, and the, the the thing there's a there's the the liver and onions truck coming by with the horn blare, and then the, the the guy driving whistling, and there's two kids just like hiding behind the house. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> the, the liver and onions truck is coming oh, no, by. Oh no, guys! So that's so funny because I just saw that yesterday. That, <laughs> that someone posted that, and then you mentioned the loss of liver and onions. So. That's hilarious. I have no idea. I never, never, never saw it. <laughs> okay, so I, I, you, we don't grieve things that we don't love. Right. And so when we grieve, it's because that 
we, we love that, whatever it is, that person, that thing, that reality. And uh, it shows us uh, there are physical reactions to grieving. It, 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 this is not depression. We don't want to confuse depression or grieving. But if you're more tired when you're grieving, that's normal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you feel like you're having trouble getting out of bed in the morning, sometimes while you're grieving, again, we don't want to confuse this with depression. But if you feel like that, that's probably normal. It's exhausting to grieve. It's a psychophysical reaction to losing something we love. And I, that means our bodies and our souls are made for love, and it hurts us when we lose it. Yep. I think that's that's really beautiful. In a it is. Way. Yeah. You know, that's why I, that's why I. I think we need to honor grieving, and we need to in a certain way love grieving. When we see somebody grieving, we should, we we should be able to look at that and think how holy of a thing that is hmm. that this person is grieving that's yeah. beautiful well and like that that brings some like um also thinking about that the image of the pieta right with mary holding her son right and that, that mm-hmm. grief how great the grief was right um and mary of course without sin you know but with great love mourns the loss of her son right and that's one of the things that uh, gets me sometimes people will sometimes make it seem like mary would not have been sad when Jesus died. Uh huh. They will say th- absurd things like that, and they're like, "Well, she would have known. She would have had the ultimate faith. She would have known that God would raise him up on the third day." And I'm like, "Absolutely." She, I would say, she probably did know that there was going to be a resurrection. Jesus said, "I will resurrect." Mary, did you know? We're like t- t- team anti Mary. Don't did you know? And team pro and Mary. Did you know? <laughs> I'm just doing that to stab him. Yeah, he got me. Take the knife out. Take it. Take it. Um, so Mary did know that Jesus would rise again in some way because Jesus said he would, mm-hmm. and he was God. You know, there was obviously, but that doesn't mean she didn't mourn the loss of her son. Right. Right. Because she loved him more than we love him. Right. We, she loved him more than any mother loves her son, even if that's even crazy to think, because she had a perfect love for him that was totally disinterested, totally pure, and so she would have hurt the most uh-huh. during that time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's, and that's why mourning is a beautiful thing. Jesus himself mourned. Mm-hmm. When did he mourn? At Lazarus. At Lazarus' death. Je- Jesus wept. Mm-hmm. And you can look at that and be like, oh. How could Jesus have really hurt there? He hurt because he loved. Right. Yeah. Good stuff. Morning is beautiful. Morning is beautiful. So is afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I found that little... There's the, there's the far side uh, a cartoon of the liver and onions. I think that was pretty darn funny. Um, so funny that you brought that up and funny that it was just posted uh, just yesterday. Um, all right, and um, so yeah, what else are you doing? What are you keeping your? Uh, what's keeping you uh, going? What are you watching? Um, let me get back to. I need to go to blank. Um, uh, Miguel asked a question about um, the the body of Jesus, and that he when he rose, he was he could um, uh, touch. Uh, let's see, where does his comment go? Um, where did your comment go? I saw it. Go? Okay, um, Jesus raised with a new body, or yeah, the raised body that he, that could be seen and touched um, will be like the same with us when we rise with him. Um, I, I don't know, except for the, I mean, so Jesus is God, but he does show us kind of the way of the resurrected body. Mm-hmm. So I think there's some sort of, some sort of similarity it's different um but it's recognizable that's what i that's kind of the the yeah the terms that i use it's mm-hmm. different but recognizable but not always immediately recognizable right. as we hear in the resurrection accounts that sometimes uh they didn't recognize him mary magdalene didn't recognize mm-hmm. jesus the disciples of Maus didn't re- recognize jesus mm-hmm. um and jesus in pre-resurrection he's never walking through wall locked doors walking through walls that, that kind of thing so there's something different about the resurrected body right. from the pre-resurrected right. body if i take baroque paintings baroque as in the type of paintings or renaissance paintings as a model for what the resurrected body will look like okay i presume that i will have amazing pecs 
Okay. <laughs> did you see us? He was not expecting that. I did not. I was also thinking about your little cherub. Little ch- <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Cherub with the heads. I don't want to be a. I don't want to be a head with wings. Yeah. Um, so. No. No. We. It, this is one of those things. We know that our body will be in some way modeled on the body of the resurrected body of Jesus, but we don't know what that means. Uh-huh. Uh, so there will be. You know, some people take it too far, saying, like, our bodies will be able to walk through walls. And we don't know if that's true, necessarily. We know that Jesus was able to, but he was also God. Right, right. So can he, does that really extend to us? We don't know. What we do know is that all of the natural, um, all of the natural uh, processes in our body that currently ail us, for instance, like cancer, uh-huh. we know that we won't have that. Right. Because our bodies will be perfect. Right. Uh, we know that um, the natural inclination to evil that we have right now, which is concupiscence, uh-huh. and natural, I'm using that term very generally for my Thomists out there, but... Um, <laughs> there's natu- All those Thomists <laughs> have tuned in. Thanks for tuning in. Don't watch Being With God. Watch our show. <laughs> I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> anyway. So, uh, we know that we won't have concupiscence. And because we don't have original sin our intellects will also be perfect. So we'll be able to see things clearly. Mm-hmm. Not, see, I don't, again, don't mean with our physical eyes, but we'll be able to see with our mind clearly those things that are d- dark to us now. So we'll have the perfect human c- composition, but it will also be raised in some way. We don't know what that is. I love taking the example of a, a, a seed and a flower. What we have right now, in some ways, is like a seed. It's planted in the earth, mm-hmm. like when we die, and it will be raised, mm-hmm. and there's a beautiful flower. Right. All of that was within the seed. Right. It's There's going to be that continu- con- continuity there. Continuity, pardon me, continuity. Um, continuity there. But it will be so much greater. Excuse me. It's, right. Right, so if you look like a, like a sunflower seed versus a sunflower, the sunflower looks nothing like the seed. Yeah. Um, and... Um, and sunflower is far more beautiful, I would say. Mm. A sunflower seed is far more tasty, I suppose. But mm. um, the the beauty is is yet to be revealed. Right. And I don't, I don't want to say that we're going to look like you know beautiful monsters or anything like we're going to be totally. Different. We will look the same, but there will be something different. Right. And it'll be so much more beautiful. Right. It's we don't know what it's like. Right, I've never been. Mm-hmm. I've never been either. Mm-hmm. If I do come back, I'll t- I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I think that ties to one other thing, and I don't want to you know stay on this topic for too long. But the human body is beautiful, and we should recognize that fact that God created something good in the human body, mm-hmm. and He's only going to make it better. So He's not taking something bad and making it good. Right. He's taking something beautiful and making it better. Making it beautiful, Lord. More beautiful, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, very good. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think Jesus wasn't recognizable because he was healed perfectly by God? Well, he wasn't healed perfectly by God, was he? Because he has the He's nail healed. marks, right? right. Mm-hmm. So, why wasn't yeah. he recognizable? I mean, God has a God has a capacity to make us not recognize things and sure at times. So, we don't know if that was a physical thing or if that was a way that it was blocking their mind in the moment in order to then reveal uh, himself later. Thought just occurred to me. I don't know if it's the best analogy, but um, it sometimes it happens to me. Like if I haven't seen somebody for like 15, 20 years, and mm-hmm. they come up to me and <laughs> they say, "Hey, do you remember me?" Oh, I hate that question. Because mm-hmm. uh, like, uh, <laughs> I, who are you? Um, but um, but when they come up and they say, "Hey, Kent, it's Bob," or whatever, like. <gasps> Oh, Bob, and I didn't. I didn't see it at first, mm-hmm. but then that second, like two seconds later, then I see that person. Like I, I see you. I know who you are. Yeah. I didn't see you at first, and if I would have just, if you just been walking down the street, but you didn't introduce yourself, I wouldn't have mm-hmm. known you as Bob. Um, but that, I don't know if that happens with other people's view that you see somebody that you haven't seen for years, you don't recognize them at all, really. Mm-hmm. But then when they, or maybe say oh, that person looks familiar. But then they introduce themselves, and I say, ah, that's who you are. That's I see a, you. Of course, I see you now. That's yeah. great. That's, I see you now. Period. I see you now. That's a beautiful phrase. Uh, I think a good example of that, in particular, when we're talking about the difference between the, uh, the fallen body and the resurrected body, would be the difference between a child and an adult. Okay. We have lots of school children, and I know most of the school children 
by face and by name. I can talk to them. I know them. That's great. They're 12, you know, 12, 13 years old. I expect in 10 years not to immediately recognize them. Right. If I see them down the street. Right. And I don't see them in between. Not because I don't know them now, but because they've grown. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? And they will be in a certain way more beautiful. And again, I'm not saying anything, you know, but yeah. we're just talking about the fact that the body, we tend to what's better. And so the fact that we grow old, we are in a certain way, we're tending to our perfection. Right. That's what we call teleology. I can talk about that at another point. <laughs> but um, we tend, you know, a child is imperfect because what's in seed form in a certain way in him or her comes and is greater. So in 10 years, I expect to see one of the kids on the street, hopefully. And, um, you know, they'll be like, hey, Father Ashmore, do you remember me? And it'll take me a minute uh -huh. because there's something different and hopefully more beautiful there. Right. And be more beautiful insofar as they've grown, they've come into themselves. And that's beautiful in and of itself. Right. And how much more then, that's kind of the classic argument, how much more will it be in heaven? It, where, If it's that much from when you're 10 to when you're 20, how much more from when you're 20 to you're eternal? Yeah, exactly. We don't know, but it's exciting, isn't yeah, it? it? I, is exciting. I'm excited at thinking yeah. about it. We're not little heads with wings. Not little heads with wings. That's a reference to a homily of mine from a long time ago. <laughs> it's back in like October or something. That was a long time ago. That, that was my, it, we don't turn into angels after we die homily. It was, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. I remember it. It was good. I usually, do you remember back when we used to have church in church with people there? Do you yes, remember that? Like Those were good days. Ago. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, but, um, I would usually sneak into the back of the church to listen to one of Father ha Father Ashmore's homilies because I, I like to listen to him and mm -hmm. and uh, see what he's up to. And I'm often in the Adoration Chapel. Ah, uh -huh. I've seen you so here. sneak back there. Sneak back there. Mm -hmm. um, very good. So um, I think that's, um, that's we're coming day. to the end of our time. We have not gone to the ash cam at no. all today yet. Oh, we are true. slacking on our ash cam. Do you, want to talk about tea Do you want to talk about teleology I, for a... Should I? I don't know. I don't, I don't think that's, that, that sounds... If you guys want me want me to talk about teleology, tell me in the comments. We'll talk about it later. Okay. But um, I don't know. I honestly didn't have anything prepared today. Um, Let's see. Yeah, we, we, I could have taken you to the ash cam earlier when you were right. talking about stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> March 15th, the last time I went oh, to Oh, oh, this is great. Like, this is something great. Oh, well, 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 hold on. Hold on. Let me get to the ash cam. Divine Meditations number eight. Oh, okay. Okay. Pause. Okay, I'm, not, I'm not there yet. Ash cam. Uh, are we there? Now we are there. There we are. Then turn, O pensive soul, for God. Pardon me. Then turn, O pensive soul, to God, for He knows best thy true grief, for He put it in my breast. Perfect. Isn't that great? It I just looked there. Perfect. And there it for He knows best thy true grief, for He put it in my breast. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, thus ends another exciting week of Fireside Chat. I hope you've had a um, had a good week. And uh, again, if, if anyone wants to be on the show or uh, has something that they to think would be helpful to share for the folks or whatever, um, uh, open invitation. Just let us know. Um, mm -hmm. I can do some more of them Zoom things and uh, and cut you in. So um, we're so glad that you joined us today. We will be back on. Monday at 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. um, today we will have the rosary at noon. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you're free to join us for that. Thanks so much. And thanks for watching our show. And and, and go watch Father Greg's show. I, I put the put yes. the link in the comments. He is a good guy. He, he is a great guy. Great. Um, I would only I, I only tease him because I because mm -hmm. he's, a, he's a great friend. So mm -hmm. I'm very exactly. excited that he's doing it. And, and I'm and I'm excited for the Most Heart of Mary community there. If anybody is watching from Most Heart of Mary, hello. Hello. Um, I miss you all. Love you all. And uh, hopefully we'll see each other after all this yeah craziness ends uh, most of art is where i was baptized too that's where i went to oh, okay. grade school from mm -hmm. k through eight so mm -hmm. i have a particular fondness for most of your heart there in topeka as mm -hmm. well and so i awesome that uh father greg you're doing that uh that ministry mm -hmm. i like the name being with god i think it's cute mm -hmm. and I'm mary did still. you know <laughs> <laughs> all right god bless you all have a good weekend